Audiens yang hadir tadi banyak e, bertanya e, dan punya interes yang tinggi mengenai kelistrikan untuk kepulauan dan memang e, mereka e, pengen tahu sebenarnya di mana batu sandungnya mengapa listrik kepulauan belum bisa berkembang secara sempurna di Indonesia. Di sini kan banyak pertemuan konsultan mekanikal elektrikal jadinya. Pertemuannya di sini sih, lebih dominan, lebih ke ketemu dari sisi-sisi konsultan sama lihat dari tim-tim yang biasa berperang di proyek sih, lebih ke situ sih sebenarnya. Usually we get to meet about 80% of local uh, visitors and about 20% of international visitors. Tempat meeting point yang sangat bagus karena customer-customer kami yang lama akan muncul yang kita nggak tahu. Dan sangat efisien daripada keliling Jakarta, temu customer satu persatu. It's also the opportunity to 
uh, discover new leads, to talk to people that we usually don't talk and to showcase our, uh, our solution. Kemudian bisa mungkin di masa depan bisa saya gunakan sebagai alternatif dari komponen-komponen yang selama ini saya gunakan. Jadi biar komponennya nggak itu itu mulu kali ya. Kita ikut di event elektrik Indonesia terutama yang diselenggarakan oleh Pamerindo kurang lebih hampir tujuh kali sejak berdirinya Chin di Indonesia tahun 2005. Sebenarnya agak menyesal sih kenapa nggak dari tanggal 11 karena emang seru dan dapat banyak uh, vendor baru yang mungkin nanti bakal bisa lebih kompetitif dengan vendor yang selama ini kita gunakan. Banyak sekali informasi dan teknologi-teknologi yang sangat pesat sekali yang membuat saya wow gitu kan dan luar biasa sekali dan banyak produk-produk yang lain yang kita bisa tahu dua tahun lalu nggak muncul sekarang muncul apa aja dan kita bisa lihat kompetitor perkembangannya produk-produk kita yang dulu Schneider nggak ada sekarang sudah ada lah ya ini buat uh, refresh kita untuk kedepannya itu ah, ngapain keep it up and see you in two years As China's most time-honored engine manufacturer, our perseverance to keep pace with the world's cutting-edge technologies and our remaining pursuit of green, efficient, and intelligent make us the engine power expert from China. Who are we? We are FAWDE. We have created three brands, All Win, Power Win, King Win, we offer diversified products ranging from 40 to 760 horsepower and are hailed as engine power supermarket. In terms of products, we have always adopted rigorous quality standards in the past international standard quality system certifications such as ISO 9001, QS 9000, TS 16949, and IATF 16949 insisting on quality assurance based on the system, quality control with an iron fist in our quality efforts to ensure the advanced quality of products made in China. At the frontier of global technological innovation, we also cooperate with global leading companies and the scientific research institutes such as AVL, FEV, and Ricardo. As a trusted partner of famous companies such as Jefan, Dongfeng, Jack, XCMG, Photon, Allmarks, SDLG, and Henli, our engine is their first choice. Our 11 liters and 13 liters products are market leaders in China. As to generator set field, with a power range of 12 to 270 kWe, our adapter can satisfy the need for different power ranges and global inventory reaches up to 100,000 sets. We provide services to Telcom South Africa and Mobile Telcom Indonesia and State Grid, Telecom Malaysia and Mobile, the Ministry of Water Resources of PRC and CNPC in such fields as oil field, war industry, hydraulic engineering, telecommunications and infrastructure, in terms of manufacturing technology, we apply the most advanced AC power measurement technology, ground source heat pump composite system, and coat test technology to ensure the minimum energy consumption at the factory. We have also built a smart factory and formed a complete planning system of engine smart factory based on our solid foundation of automation, transformed production from made in China to intelligent manufacturing in China. We have established solid strategic partnerships with top component providers such as Bosch, Honeywell, Malle. Nowadays, 
Our products are sold in more than 60 countries and regions, including Vietnam, India, Russia, and Indonesia. We are committed to ensuring that our products will always go hand in hand with Supreme Core Services, China's engine power expert, going global. yang hadir tadi banyak e, bertanya e, dan punya interest yang tinggi mengenai kelistrikan untuk kepulauan dan memang e, mereka e, pengen tahu sebenarnya di mana batu sandungnya mengapa listrik kepulauan belum bisa berkembang secara sempurna di Indonesia sini kan banyak pertemuan konsultan mekanikal elektrikal jadinya pertemuannya di sini sih lebih dominan lebih ke ketemu dari sisi-sisi konsultan sama lihat dari tim-tim yang biasa berperang di proyek sih, lebih ke situ sih sebenarnya. Usually we get to meet about 80% of local uh, visitors and about 20% of international visitors. Tempat meeting point yang sangat bagus karena customer-customer kami yang lama akan muncul yang kita nggak tahu dan sangat efisien daripada keliling Jakarta temu customer satu persatu. It's also the opportunity to uh, discover new leads, to talk to people that we usually don't talk and to showcase our uh, our solution. Kemudian bisa mungkin di masa depan bisa saya gunakan sebagai alternatif dari komponen-komponen yang selama ini saya gunakan. Jadi biar komponennya nggak itu-itu mulu kali ya. Kita ikut di event elektrik Indonesia terutama yang diselenggarakan oleh Pamerindo kurang lebih hampir tujuh kali sejak berdirinya Chin di Indonesia tahun 2005. Sebenarnya agak menyesal sih kenapa nggak dari tanggal 11 karena emang seru dan dapat banyak uh, vendor baru yang mungkin nanti bakal bisa lebih kompetitif dengan vendor yang selama ini kita gunakan. Banyak sekali informasi dan teknologi-teknologi yang sangat pesat sekali yang membuat saya Wow gitu kan dan luar biasa sekali dan banyak produk-produk yang lain yang kita bisa tahu dua tahun lalu nggak muncul sekarang muncul apa aja dan kita bisa lihat kompetitor perkembangannya produk-produk kita yang dulu Schneider nggak ada sekarang sudah ada lah ya ini buat uh, refresh kita untuk kedepannya itu ngapain keep it up and see you in two years. As China's most time-honored engine manufacturer, our perseverance to keep pace with the world's cutting-edge technologies and our remaining pursuit of green, efficient, and intelligent make us the engine power expert from China. Who are we? We are F-A-W-D-E. We have created three brands, All Win, Power Win, King Win, we offer diversified products ranging from 40 to 760 horsepower and are hailed as engine power supermarket. In terms of products, we have always adopted rigorous quality standards in the past international standard quality system certifications such as ISO 9001, QS 9000, TS 16949, and IATF 16949. 
insisting on quality assurance based on the system. Quality control with an iron fist in our quality efforts to ensure the advanced quality of products made in China. At the frontier of global technological innovation, we also cooperate with global leading companies and scientific research institutes such as AVL, FEV, and Ricardo. As a trusted partner of famous companies such as Jiafang, Dongfeng, Jack, XCMG, Photon, Hallmarks, as the LG and Henley, our engine is their first choice. Our 11 liters and 13 liters products are market leaders in China. As to generator set field, with a power range of 12 to 270 kWe, our adapter can satisfy the need for different power ranges and global inventory reaches up to 100,000 sets. We provide services to Telcom South Africa and Mobile Telcom Indonesia and State Grid, Telecom Malaysia and Mobile, the Ministry of Water Resources of PRC and CNPC in such fields as oil field, war industry, hydraulic engineering, telecommunications and infrastructure. In terms of manufacturing technology, we applied the most advanced AC power measurement technology, ground source heat pump composite system, and code test technology to ensure the minimum energy consumption at the factory. We have also built a smart factory and formed a complete planning system of engine smart factory based on our solid foundation of automation, transformed production from made in China to intelligent manufacturing in China. We have established solid strategic partnerships with top component providers such as Bosch, Honeywell, Malle. Nowadays, our products are sold in more than 60 countries and regions including Vietnam, India, Russia, and Indonesia. We are committed to ensuring that our products will always go hand in hand with Supreme Core Services. China's engine power expert, going global. Good morning, good afternoon, selamat siang, or good evening depending on where you are in the world. And welcome to today's webinar, Energy Talk 10 Series. This webinar is part of Electric and Power Indonesia and powered by FAO Shifang Engine Business Division, or FAO. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. May peace be upon you. Welcome to Mr. Edi Widiono. He is founder and chairman of Supervisory Board, Indonesia Smart Grid Initiative, or PCCI and keynote speaker for today, Mr. Hama Briza, as a President Chairman of Badan Pengkajian dan Penerapan Teknologi, BPPT, the Agency for the Assessment and Application of Technology. Our special topic for today's webinar is Smart Grid and Energy Efficiency. This webinar fully organized by Indonesia Smart Grid Initiative, or PCCI, along with Pemerindo Indonesia and broadcast via Zoom webinar. We have just a few announcements before we begin for general housekeeping. Host will mute your audio and camera. Today's session will be recorded and we will share the recorded session two days after the webinar. Q&A session, use Q&A button to type your question. Mention to a speaker your question is for, what you can access, recorded session, presentation slide, a certificate, five to seven days after the webinar and submit your inquiries to ijung at pamerindo.com. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to listen to the opening speech delivered by founder and chairman of Supervisory Board, Indonesia Smart Grid Initiative, or PCCI. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Edi Widiono. I need to start my video. Uh, can you start my video, please? Okay. 
Et c'est pas bon. Yep. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, Papa, all good. Yeah? Yes. It's clear? Yes, oh, yes good bye, Eddie. Yeah. Good bye, Eddie. Uh, all right. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera bagi kita semua. Shalom. Om Swastiastu. Namo Buddhaya. Salam kebajikan. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and our respected colleagues of the Energy Talk Series 10, Smart Energy and Energy Efficiency, initiated by PGCI, together with Electric Power Indonesia, or Pamerindo. I would like to profusely thanks to the speaker, moderator, and sponsor for your presence and willingness to have an open discussion in this webinar. Keynote speaker will be Mr. Hamam Riza, President, Chairman at the Agency for the Assessment and Application of Technology, or BPPT Indonesia. And honorable speakers will be Mr. Senna Hurmuzan, the Deputy Director for Director of Electricity Corporation, Ministry of Energy and Mineral Resources, Indonesia. Madam Farida Z, uh, member of the Board of Supervisors of Masyarakat Konservasi dan Efficiency Energy Indonesia, or Indonesian uh, Conservation and Efficient Energy Efficiency uh, Association. The speaker sponsor will be Mr. Yang Cheng, the Director of Overseas Marketing Department of FOG, Mr. Zhao Liang Jun, the sales executive, sales executive of FAUD. And moderator is Mr. Honorable Mr. Andika Prastawa, the chairman of supervisory board of Indonesian Solar Energy Association. And our sponsor today, uh, FAUD Jiefang Automotive Co Limited, Buxi Diesel Engine Work, a company who is well known as an automotive uh, producers, uh, especially on trucks, but now known to transform into smart factory uh, provider. Ladies and gentlemen, with the increasingly serious concern on global warming and its impact to the livelihood of mankind, sustainable development has become an urgent requirement all over the world. Indonesia, being a signatory of Paris Agreement 2015, has pledged a national determined contributions, which include a target of 23% of renewable energy in electricity energy mix by the year 2025, which is currently seems to be a little bit uh, hard to be achieved unless a huge development of intermittent renewable generators can be deployed. In addition to that, we need to plan a coordinate technology transformation to be able to absorb the intermittency nature without sacrificing quality of surface services to the customer. For example, by implementing so-called smart grid technology. The Indonesian Ministry of Energy and Mineral Resources has a very important role to create a regulatory framework for smart grid implementation and PLN being a sole off-taker of the electricity, has a very important role in building the enabling environment that can accelerate the development of renewable energy in Indonesia. At this time, PLN still needs to add 13 gigawatt of renewable energy gener generators to reach the national energy planning target or RUEN. Thank you to Mr. Eduardo for the opening speech. Ladies and gentlemen, now we are going to listen to the opening speech delivered by President Chairman BPPT from uh, Mr. Hamamiza. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Hamab Riza. Thank you, Hoss. I guess uh, Eddie uh, was uh, cut off uh, for the signal, but let me go ahead and start uh, the, the talk here. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Provisari Sadri, Wayasiri Amri, Walu Data Milisani Yafkau Kauli, Tahula Walakwata Ilagilai Lazim. Honorable Mr. Eddie Widiono, founder of Prakarsa Jaringan Cerdas, the Indonesia Smart Grid Initiative, also to notably the speaker, notable speaker, distinguished speakers, uh, Pak Jisman Utajulu, Director of Electricity Program Development at the Directorate General of Electricity, Ministry of uh, Energy, and also to my good friend, Ibu Farida Z, uh, the Board of Supervisor for Maske, to Dr. Andika Prastawa, uh, the Chairman of the Supervisory of the Solar Energy Association, also to uh, Mr. Yang Cheng and you also Zhao Yang Jun uh, from Faudi, and of course, uh, Bapak Ibu Semua, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, which appear online and as well as probably uh, some of you are uh, gathering offline uh, together with all uh, the participants. A very good morning. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good afternoon, not morning. It's always morning since you want to be keep you know, uh, your spirit high uh, and <clears throat> Uh, also, we we start the morning with uh, a very uh, keen uh, for our work and activities. So let us praise uh, to the God, Allah Almighty, and I appreciate for the organizer which have you know uh, organized this uh, energy talk number ten. I would like to uh, really appreciate. Uh, and honor by uh, Eddie Vidiono, uh, the founding, the founder of the Smart Grid Initiative. Uh, let me share with you some of the talking points uh, on the smart energy, smart grids, and energy efficiency. I would like to take the uh, a specific title on on this uh, smart grids and the challenges uh, for the future of sustainable power system uh, since this uh, mostly uh, a problem that all of us are facing today as, as as a basic infrastructure the affordability of electricity is already a fundamental uh, need of all the people the community uh, the the law the regulation number 30 of uh, Republic of Indonesia in 2009 on electric uh, on electricity yeah, uh, mandates that the development of electricity aims to ensure the availability of sufficient amount of electricity in good quality in uh, the pricing is reasonable yeah, reasonably priced to improve the welfare and the prosperity of the people fairly, evenly, and inclusively, yeah, no one left behind uh, in order for us to realize the sustainable development goals. Yeah. So uh, electricity is the central supporting pillars in all aspects of the development. Therefore, the success of the development is highly dependent on the availability and the quality of the electricity. The condition of our national electrical system uh, is still a major concern, yeah. judging by its reliability, uh, judging by its quality. Yeah. Even we are still unsatisfied 
with the electrification ratio. So it is estimated that in the next few years, uh, our electrical system, our power system is required to answer new challenges. Yeah, uh, even more with the with the appearance of uh, electric vehicles, uh, uh, large capacity batteries, for example, yeah, smart appliances, uh, and many other disruptive technology uh, coming out of this uh, industrial 4.0 era. Okay, uh, so we will look, you know, into a major power system, well, including the direct current uh, system as as well. Yeah. So. In order for this, uh, in order to supply the reliability, reliability uh, quality, uh, and economical uh, energy to consumer uh, continuously, there are a few things that uh, we should be uh, putting our uh, head into. Yeah, uh, we need to think about this uh, seriously the uncertainties that always occur in the system, uh, the change in load and the generation at all times. Uh, we, we seek for the economical uh, operation. Uh, each type of the plan has different costs, of course, uh, cost characteristics of the generation. Uh, we are also uh, observing the limitation due to the environment. Yeah. Some, some power plants, especially uh, driven by uh, fossil fuel, for example, are vulnerable to uh, the air quality, air pollution. Uh, so uh, uh, this is, should be uh, putting our uh, focus on how basically the green economy can be part of this uh, you know, uh, requirement for uh, energy as well. We can also observe the equipment capabilities and characteristic, uh, how we operate this uh, in a safely manner. Any electrical equipment has a maximum load, for example, which cannot exceed uh, at a certain point. So we have to uh, take this into account. And consequently, yeah, uh, for performing a controlling action, uh, human salvation, as well as maintenance need. So if we look at most of these challenges, yeah, so we arrive at the a question, really. Uh, it might be the research uh, questions. Yeah. How the future of the electric power system can be achieved in uh, most uh, effective and efficient manner? Yeah. We can see that the electricity system and operation described, uh, which I, I has just you know uh, pinpoint some of the the criteria are not designed to actually to integrate with renewable energy sources, for example. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> we we can also uh, see that the power system is not economy, and have not paid attention to the effects of carbon emission and. Uh, do not pay uh, attention to the conservation and energy efficiency. So the control and operation of future electric power, should, you know, should bring in the uh, the key points, the our key attention to the insistence of, for example, increased penetration of renewable energy and distributed energy containers in the system, uh, increasing the role of computer di digital. Uh, infrastructures and cyber technologies. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I would like to say this as a, a cyber interdependencies yeah, with, for all the utilities and energy, uh, uh, whether it is uh, from one sector to the other sectors. Yeah. But it might be that we have to think uh, to have a holistic view on this uh, role of uh, digital uh, infrastructures and the cyber interdependencies. We are also should uh, really pay our attention to the high reliability and quality of supply to consumers and the requirement 
of the era of competition in increasingly uh, competitive business. Next, uh, I like to bring you to some of the, I will say, uh, naive solutions uh, with with uh, a lot of aspect uh, in the future uh, of electricity. Basically, uh, first we can you can see that the centralization, distributed generation. Uh, rooftop uh, power uh, photovoltaic will be you know energy producers we can we should also uh, think about the carbonization the uh, the way that we can achieve the paris agreement target of bringing down the uh, global warming development of which you know really constitute the the development of new and renewable energy uh, development of uh, bio fuel uh, or bio based uh, fuel yeah can also we should also pay attention to digitization yeah the complex electricity uh, network is required to manage that is both uh, efficient and uh, promising uh, to be uh, part of you know the disruptive uh, and adaptation to the industrial 4.0 technologies such as Internet of Things, uh, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, big data, and cloud cloud computing, and again, disruption, which uh, which means that you we are ready to accommodate new uh, the new frontier of technology such as the electric cars, uh, the fast charging system. Uh, and the batteries and all the other components related to this yeah and how we can coordinate this in in a distributed energy resources to be offered to the wholesale electricity market so i don't want to go into uh, you know uh, really uh, a detailed explanation of uh, of the concept of smart grid but if i can jump to uh, to the uh, to the benefit of the smart grid, maybe it's in slide number uh, 12, uh, 16. Yeah. Okay. So I I want to uh, take to take you to some uh, discussion about the opportunities for smart grid implementation in Indonesia, especially. Yeah, uh, we can look this uh, in in three ways. Yeah, uh, on how you look on on implementation of smart grid. Yeah, uh, first of all, is really distribution network yeah. using an advanced uh, metering uh, system. Yeah. Uh, which demand respond then uh, following that it means also that we look into distributed energy system the use of uh, the control system that maximize the use of available energy from alternative sources in combination yeah, whether it is coming from uh, the solar uh, system uh, coming from the wind uh, system, or even from the from the uh, micro hydro or the uh, other uh, new and renewable resources, yeah. And then you, you, we should look into the combination of the available energy storage equipment. So that that is distributed energy system. And the third one that we key point the. Three, the third key, key point of the implementation of smart grid is the forward transmission, the optimal arrangement of generating loads, yeah. uh, economic dispatch, and anti eye landing. Yeah, eye landing. So the overall incorporation of this technology will take us to uh, from the current electric power system. Yeah into a smart grid technology that can be implemented. 
to provide what we are so keen to achieve, which is the sustainable operation of the power system. So in, in doing this, uh, yeah, so we need to have a certain guidelines on supporting of the smart grid deploy, deployment, which I highlights in this uh, next few slides. On the distribution side, uh, we, we opt to do assisting government programs in energy cons conservation, uh, persuasive step to the community to use mini power plants, the development of primary organic fuel, for example. Yeah. On the second key items, which is transmission, uh, a few uh, points here is increasing the role of the load control and control center, sensing the modernization of the system and how we do the initiation of power line communication, for example, uh, through the PLN Icon Plus, which is uh, really uh, expanding uh, in many areas uh, uh, in Indonesia. And on the other uh, part of this uh, deployment that we need to guarantee uh, the development of uh, telecommunication infrastructures. I am not too worried about this Palapa Ring project broadband, but uh, the issue here is more into the last mile of telecommunication, which uh, needs to bring the whole broadband system, uh, whether it is uh, wireline or uh, wireless, yeah, whether it is uh, through uh, fiber optics and many other uh, network resources, uh, that should be part of how we deploy the smart grid technology uh, throughout Indonesia. And, uh, and, uh, and a few things that uh, probably will take the greatest benefit yeah, for this uh, national e electricity uh, development with intelligent network vision is certainly the, uh, the roadmap of uh, our national electricity system. And uh, here we show you some of the milestone that probably all of us should be uh, focusing on if we are trying to achieve uh, a smart city, uh, smart uh, new capital probably in, in Kalimantan uh, soon, very soon, yeah. Uh, projecting uh, to 2045, uh, the golden Indonesia anniversary where basically Indonesia is at the top three of the highest income country in the world, yeah, with a GDP of more than 20,000 uh, GNI, the gross national income is more than 20,000. Uh, whereas at this time, uh, you know, we cannot say that we are doing very well as we are already in our middle income trap, you know, just only recently in 2019, we were able to move from the mi uh, lower middle income country to upper middle income country. But still, we are, we are still in the middle income uh, countries category. Yeah. So uh, the challenge and the future of the electricity system, uh, if we can take this into the implementation side, uh, uh, we are going to see smart electric services smart uh, renewable energy, smart transportation, smart place, smart cities, and smart power network. I think uh, Eddie with the smart grid initiative uh, uh, here are really collecting all on this aspect, yeah? Uh, developing uh, various uh, uh, points uh, of development, I will say. Uh, if we take this into you know uh, a small uh, incremental development stage, but certainly we are in a in a track where we want to implement all the the smart X capability in Indonesia for not only uh, smart electric services, but we are talking about smart cities, smart transportation, smart industry, and many other sectors, especially the five sectors in the 
Making Indonesia 4.0, which include textile, automotive, electric, uh, <coughs> uh, electronics, uh, also uh, on uh, industrial chemical process, uh, petrochemia, and food and beverages. All this will be part of the scope of implementation for the smart grid uh, in Indonesia, I, I believe so. Uh, so we take this challenge as a challenge to define our future of uh, smart facilities, for example, building a foundation for smart networking, uh, fixed infrastructures and network automation capabilities, and as well as optimize the energy value change and technology development, uh, which include, you know, which is really uh, something that uh, are very important as well in uh, in smart grid, which which is the interoperability, the prevention, and the flexibility of our uh, power system. Uh, lastly, but not least, yeah, okay. <laughs> I would like to say a few things so that we have been doing in the agency for the assessment and application of technology BBPT. Uh, we are we have implemented the uh, smart microgrid uh, in our national science technology park in Serpong. The microgrid uh, with a battery power source of 10 kilowatt hours supplies uh, power to the critical loads, and uh, if the power remains, then microgrid supplies the remaining power to the energy building network uh, in the science technology park. We are also very uh, happy uh, to be part of uh, our development of the smart microgrid uh, rooftop uh, system, solar system, which also being a, a, a showcase for us uh, as part of our research development, uh, assessment and application of this technology, the IoT implementation to monitor and control smart microgrids, power grid distribution automation, demand response, uh, which require, of course, uh, automis automation and uh, monitoring and control of the GIS-based uh, transformer, for example, or substation, linked to the database system for asset management and peak uh, shaping. I think uh, later on, uh, Andika will also uh, share with you uh, some of the, the few things that we have done in our laboratories and uh, our part of how we can leverage uh, our knowledge yeah, to uh, to become to master uh, to become uh, the to increase yeah, or to build the capacity of uh, Indonesia smart grid uh, system and certainly uh, the long experience at our uh, laboratory, which is uh, one of the national laboratory for energy uh, conservation, uh, conversion, uh, energy conversion uh, is, uh, will be part of the, the whole ecosystem, the whole innovation uh, ecosystem that we are uh, targeting to bring the smart grid to uh, the whole uh, of Indonesia. I think uh, that's uh, that is particularly uh, what I can uh, share with all of you, uh, Bapak Ibu, ladies and gentlemen. In conclusion, Indonesia electricity sector has not escaped the 5D, the carbonization trend, including uh, digitization, demand response, decentralization, and disruption. At least the carbonization and digitization have been a concern of the government. So that's why uh, a few regulations are in place now, but we are still uh, targeting to be better uh, in the whole uh, ecosystem of uh, delivering uh, a modern electrical system. Yeah. So <clears throat> development is a must. Automation driven by technological advances uh, will bring uh, change, uh, job loss to the new skill, of course. But uh, even this not this doesn't mean that you you know uh, take taken off uh, most of the job. Uh, we are we are basically seeing a shift 
in the expertise, uh, in the competency, in the job uh, description. So education to the new workforce, yeah, as part of the national capacity uh, on uh, talent development for the new uh, workforce is uh, need to be uh, really uh, strong and the government should uh, put uh, their uh, programs and uh, budget uh, to secure uh, the most talented uh, people to work on this uh, futures of uh, the power system in Indonesia. Thank you uh, for your attention. Uh, I think this is what I can share with you. Uh, I, I really at the end, uh, I really appreciate the cooperation and the collaboration, and I want to ask your hand actually uh, for so that we can always work together. Uh, we can al always uh, uh, be successful together and uh, to contribute to our uh, country and to the global uh, ecosystem. Thank you so much. Bilahi Taufik Walidaya. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you to Mr. Hamam Riza for the keynote speech and the presentation. Before we start the webinar, we will have a quick polling. Please choose what is the best answer. Now on your screen, this is the uh, uh, question for the polling. Is the oh, term of <laughs> smart grid and energy efficiency interesting? We're still waiting for your answer. Okay, thank you for the polling. And ladies and gentlemen, before we continue this webinar, let me introduce our moderator for today's webinar, Mr. Andika Prastawa. He is chairman of Supervisory Board of ISC. And for the next, I will hand over this webinar to Mr. Andika Prastawa. Mr. Andika, the time is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, can I have my video start? Yes. Okay. All right, so first of all, uh, I would like to thank to the, uh, the committee of this uh, webinar to uh, allow me to to serve as a moderator. And the second, uh, I would like to greet uh, Pak Edi and also Pak Hamam. Thank you very much uh, for your very uh, inspirative uh, speaks uh, this, uh, this afternoon. Uh, all right, so let me start with this session, the topic of smart grid and energy efficiency. Uh, I think uh, there are several notes that I took during Pa Hamam's uh, uh, speech, uh, that is uh, smart grid and the future of uh, the power, uh, power system sustainability is the, the most uh, important that uh, Pa Hamam bring up the, this afternoon. and. Electricity quality is the mandate, while the power system faces uh, new challenges of uh, disruptive, I should say, disruptive uh, technology like uh, electric vehicle, industry 4.0, and which is need uh, high reliability, availability, and quality of electricity, and yet need environment environmentally uh, friendly as well. So uh, it is. It is not account yet with the digital environment in electricity system, disruptive technology, in power generation, distribution, and these all bring us to be what we call as the smart grid. And the smart grid is, is, is a combination between power system and telecommunication as well as uh, IT technology. So the telecommunication is quite a backbone in, this, uh, in the system and IT is the blood of the smart grid. So that's why uh, uh, I'm taking quite uh, uh, attention in the last, last mile connection system because uh, uh, this is going to be uh, very crucial for the implementation of the smart grid. Uh, uh, although the uh, the backbone of the power ring and kind of things already been 
in stock, but the, the, the last one is quite uh, important. So that's uh, several things that I could take from uh, Pamam, and thank you very much, Pamam, for your uh, uh, very excellent uh, speech uh, this afternoon. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as we know that uh, the, with the increasing zero energy shortage and global warming, sustainable development has become an urgent requirement like what has been stated by Pak Ahmad. And Indonesia has a great renewable energy potential with a target of 23% uh, of uh, renewable energy uh, by the end of 2025. And this is what, uh, quite a challenge. Uh, how to target how to get the target done and uh, therefore uh, we need a very uh, very well planned uh, uh, act, uh, action planning and also the strategies uh, for uh, enable us to get uh, the target other thing is, uh, is that uh, uh, we haven't had explore and exploit the potential of energy efficiency uh, but actually by using this energy efficiency technology, we can somehow control or conserve the demand growth and hence and therefore the need of generation could be more conservative and the, you know, the, the amount of energy that we, we, we need to, we need to produce by renewable energy, although the percentage is the same 23%, but since the uh, energy conservation, uh, could be uh, increased so that the renewable energy uh, uh, demand also can be lower as well. Uh, as the Energy Authority in Indonesia, uh, this is the duty of the Minister of Energy and Mineral Resources uh, to, re to produce best regulation for any technology, including the smart grid that can incorporate the renewable energy, energy efficiency, new technology of energy, new new way of uh, how do we distribute the energy and so on, uh, and get the technology done in the implementation and uh, can be carried out by PLN in, in, in a manageable way. And we believe that this would accelerate the, the development of renewable energy efficiency and renewable energy uh, development and utilization in Indonesia. Uh, to accelerate the process, actually, the, we need uh, not only the knowledge and uh, capacity of technology in this smart grid, but also we need regulation as well as the standard technology that meet sustain uh, requirement that is necessary. And uh, this also uh, another topic that would be uh, would be addressed in this uh, afternoon. Uh, uh, discussion. Ladies and gentlemen, small by FAW Fang Wuxi Diesel Engine Works, who have leading domestic capacity and development and the advantage of the FAW Technology Center. This webinar will discuss the role and of the private sector of renewable energy project on a scale so we can achieve the target by 2025. Discussing uh, discussing the topic today, uh, we will have Mr. Senda from the uh, uh, Director General of Electricity of the Ministry of Energy and uh, Mineral Resources, represent um, Mr. Jisman Hutajulu, Ibu Farida Z from the MASKE, the uh, Society of uh, Energy Conservation and Energy Efficiency of Indonesia, and our sp uh, sponsor, Mr. Yang Cheng and Mr. Zaul Yang Jun. Ladies and gentlemen, with, without uh, uh, any further, I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Senda. Uh, he is the Deputy Director of Electric Program Development, the Director General of Electricity. And uh, I would uh, ask uh, Mr. Senda to uh, uh, deliver the presentation. Time is yours. 15 minutes, Pak Senda. Thank you, Pak Andika. 
Can you you hear me, Pak? Uh, let me try to share my screen. Can I share my screen? The host, uh, could you could you let Pak Senda yes, to share? Uh, you can continue to share your screen, Pak. Okay. Well, but now can be. Uh, let me try to full screen. Comment. Bisa dilihat ya Pak ya. Okay. Bisa Pak. Oh. Tapi belum bisa full screen ya. Full screen yang di bawah. Di sebelah untuk yang zoom. Iya. Let me try. Boleh ku anotis ya. Masih ketutup uh, ininya. Uh, let me try. Pakai bar yang di atas bisa Mas Senda. Itu di, di atas. Saya juga. Saya so, ada juga ya. Ini uh, ada di atas tu yang di sampingnya review view help dan sebagainya sebelah kiri Pak. Ya, ini ya Pak, udah dapat. Oh. Nah. Sorry, di klik kiri saja pak. Klik kiri. Di tombol yang tadi di klik kiri. Mungkin itu. Ya, sudah bisa ya pak. Uh, thank you. Sudah. Uh, terima kasih. Uh, thank you for Pak Andika for the moderator. Uh, on behalf of uh, Jisman, our uh, director, uh, greeting from him because he cannot make it uh, today because he should company department for the site visit. Please allow me to present for on behalf of uh, our director uh, this afternoon, distinguished Bapak uh, Eddie Widiono from PGCI. Distinguished uh, Bapak Hamam Reza from BPPT and uh, distinguished Ibu Farida Z from Maske. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, please, uh, I am Senda from Directorate General Electricity. Would like to present our program in uh, Directorate General Electricity concerning the smart grid and energy efficiency as our team for today as it is opening by pahamam is very comprehensive and also from uh, bapa andika introduction already completed so i just try to make short what we have today then we we'll, can continue into a discussion later on our main objective uh, for in uh, regul as regulator for uh, electricity is uh, to make sure that we have a sufficient supply of electricity for our customer with a good quality and affordable price is the most important for our people 
that they will get a, a affordable uh, price of electricity. And in terms of uh, power plant, uh, the, our target is uh, renewable energy in 2025 for about 23%. And also for the electric uh, transmission. And we should, uh, business uh, should uh, submit the electricity to our industrial center. The policy for the uh, substation, we have target for minimum one substation for each uh, residency. And our main uh, program for rural electrification in smart grid is the expansion of electricity access on remote and scatter area. Uh, and we also start a smart grid implementation in 2020. Uh, so our the main program from government is to make sure that all our brother and sister in East Indonesia will receive uh, the electricity, uh, same with other location in Indonesia. And we already have uh, reached almost uh, 99.28 ratio of electricity for people uh, on March 2021. We still need to work hard in uh, for area in East Indonesia, Papua Barat, and Papua, also Maluku, and uh, Nusa Tenggara, because the, uh, the electricity city ratio is uh, uh, still low is uh, below 99 percent and the next our uh, profile of electricity in indonesia we have installed capacity around 72 megawatt and most of our sources from coal the renewable energy is still uh, low bill uh, below around uh, 10%. So we still have to work uh, to develop more uh, electricity from renewable in the near future. But uh, the pro problem is since pandemic, we have uh, low demand and we have excess power. So we need to find out how to make sure that uh, renewable energy still can be uh, developed in the in the future so the smart grid uh, program is already stayed in our national development pack from 2020 to 2024 which is state that uh, in java area we should install five uh, smart grid program uh, from 2020, five uh, location uh, every year. So in total, we will have new 25 uh, smart grid system uh, until 2024. And uh, the definition of smart grid uh, is already standardized within RUPTL and the decree of uh, uh, Ministry of Mineral Resource, the, the main, uh, the main uh, definition of smart grid is just should be for there is two-way communication in the electricity system. So it's a smart grid concept follow the industrial uh, 4.0 with uh, the main uh, core objective is to make sure there is uh, two communication and what we call prosumer where the meaning is consumer who can generate store and sell electricity to provide uh, the fellow customer so the customer become smarter they can buy and sell their electricity Okay, so uh, the program for smart grid in 2020 
we have uh, first uh, advanced metering infrastructure infrastructures there's already a trial in java for phase one also we have developed a digital substation in uh, tangram also uh, there is uh, also we have uh, developed two control center remdoc and reoc for to the for the development of a smart uh, grid for better digitalization and control and this is uh, the location of a smart grid development in java bali system in first in uh, tangrang in teluk naga also in spatan and in surabaya uh, in draft RUPTL 2021 and 2030 we have a 10 program state in draft RUPTL in smart grid community pilot project implementation automatic dispatch ids in sumba island smart micro grid in several area it's fun metering technology jakarta bogor and bali for the location also and we try to introduce a mobility for ev charging station in jakarta bandung and then pasar this is the location uh, uh, of rock map smart grid project in indonesia with is state in draft ruptl 2021-2030 and we have also uh, the flop uh, ami project uh, expand metering infrastructures this the it will be in uh, bekasi area pondok gede the main objective is uh, with the smart meter we have two communication for the customer so they can uh, develop uh, the rooftop so they can sell and buy the the electricity the target is uh, for 65000 uh, household and uh, the program uh, is uh, developed by cooperation with Korean Institute for Advanced and Technology. And we also have a USA project with Smart Grid in ADS Sumba. Uh, that's also mentioned by Pa Hamam Reza before. The Smart Grid project is uh, try to introduce the hy hybrid system between uh, solar PV and the diesel generation but later on for during the implementation we learned that uh, that's not enough when we introduce the hybrid system because when the there is not enough uh, light from uh, sun the solar uh, the diesel engine will start to uh, on later on uh, suddenly there is uh, sun coming and the engine should be stopped that's why we come to conclusion we need to introduce battery instead uh, of hybrid diesel and pv system so that's why the smart grid is mean uh, we need to be smart before the system because we not just only rely on the system but we need to rely on what we can do to make sure the system work as we expect and then uh, the new project will coming by next year we also working together with korean uh, by introducing the charging station for the ev electric vehicle we'll have a uh, 80 electric uh, cars and two wheeler that uh, can char can be charged through uh, PV system. So it means the electric vehicle will be supplied by uh, clean energy from solar. 
hopefully this project will uh, run by uh, early years next year okay and also we have target for uh, smart grid for ev system by 2030 we will have a charging session for about 31000 uh, unit installed throughout indonesia and we also have a battery swap station for electric uh, vehicle uh, two wheelers and uh, there will be the target will be uh, 67000 uh, station for uh, battery swap throughout indonesia by 2030 and we also the uh, develop a smart green city in a new capital in Kalimantan. We still develop the modeling for, to supply electricity uh, in the new capital by year to 2024. I think that's what uh, we have today. Maybe we can continue for the discussion later on. Back to you, uh, Andika, thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Pasenda. It's very, uh, very interesting and uh, new information and knowledge from your presentation. It's very excellent presentation. Uh, let me uh, have some notes uh, of the, what uh, Pasenda has explained just now, that as a regulatory uh, agency, so the ESDM or DJK uh, has has a, has a duty to ensure electricity supply uh, to the people sufficiently with affordable price and also the quality. And uh, it is also the duty to, to think how and to plan how to extend the electricity services up to the rural area as well as the uh, uh, region states, uh, region uh, states or uh, lower uh, uh, states uh, under the region or uh, villages and how to increase the electricity ratio is also another challenges here because uh, our uh, you know our brother and sister in the eastern part of indonesia still lack of electricity and we need to introduce uh, more affordable uh, and and in a, in a quality manners of uh, electricity all that uh, in the same times we have a challenges in renewable energy expansion to to, re to achieve the uh, renewable energy uh, target in 2025 and regarding the smart grid, uh, it's already been uh, in the trial uh, stages in uh, Java and going to be uh, five locations each year for the next five years. And uh, the definition of uh, smart grids has been already defined in the RUPTL and also the, the uh, uh, PROMEN uh, ASDM. That is, uh, smart grid is uh, an electricity system with the capability of two way communication. And this to accommodate the prosumers uh, in the electricity 4.0. Some devices, some technology has also <coughs> been introduced, the advanced metering infrastructure. Actually, this is uh, about the, can be a, a component of Internet of Things. So it's not, it can be uh, just not only for uh, rooftop, but it can also taking the data and gonna be a big data and you can use as uh, analysis for anything, you can uh, you can predict the uh, the load. You can you can see the behavior of uh, consumer and uh, consumers and so on and so forth. Not only for the uh, transaction of uh, solar rooftop, digital substation, control center, and kind of things, and uh, also the, the 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 upcoming or the incoming technology of e-mobility charging station. This is also uh, uh, new challenges uh, in the new uh, electric system. So. Uh, I think not of them, of the points, but those are the points that I can take from uh, what uh, Pak Senda has been mentioned just now. Let us now move to uh, the next uh, uh, speakers, uh, Ibu Farida Z. Ibu Farida, uh, she is the Board of Supervisor of Masyarakat Konservasi dan Efisiensi Energi Indonesia the Indonesian Energy Conservation and Efficiency Society. 
and also I think uh, uh, yeah, I believe uh, she was uh, a former director in the uh, Directorate General of uh, New and Renewable Energy, and I I believe she has a lot of experience and information, and also thought about this smart grid and also the energy conservation. Bu Farida, uh, 15 minutes time of yours, please. Thank you, Pa. Uh, would you please uh, host to open my uh, video? It's still close. Host. Yes, okay, thank you. Thank you. And maybe we start with the uh, uh, presentation. Um, yes. First of, of all, uh, I would like to uh, express my uh, sincere uh, appreciation to PJCI that uh, give me a chance to join to this uh, forum. And also uh, my thanks to, to Pa Hamam who already shared his uh, thought uh, regarding the uh, uh, smart grid. This is a very uh, interesting information that uh, we have from him today. And also uh, uh, my thanks uh, to uh, moderators, uh, distinguished uh, speaker and uh, participants. My presentation, the topic of my presentation is uh, why should we go to energy efficiency, which is now we are uh, still in the uh, continuation of the, the IEEC, the third IEEC EE, uh, forum uh, conference. Uh, today is the last day. Uh, we already have a lot of, of information, a lot of data, a lot of fact finding from the energy effic efficiency uh, implementation and, uh, and a policy in many countries. 160 uh, speakers already already in place during, during the, the conference. Next, please. At least there are, there are uh, some uh, reason behind, behind the uh, initiative, energy efficiency initiative. Uh, the, first, uh, the first reason is the, the uh, uh, response of the global uh, community to the, the uh, positive impact of uh, energy e efficiency implementation in the uh, economics uh, aspect of uh, uh, that uh, beneficial for, for the world. And the, uh, the energy efficiency uh, is the, this is uh, initiated by IEA initiated by International Energy Agency, uh, the, uh, the, the community, the World Community already agrees that uh, to put EES is uh, the first fuel, uh, which is uh, we have to, to use, uh, we have to, to do the, the energy efficiency first before we touch uh, anything of, of fuel. And the second is EE is a real solution to combat uh, clim climate change make a significant uh, contribution to, to the, uh, uh, reduce the greenhouse gas emission. And the third is uh, uh, this is uh, uh, very easy to, uh, to adapt, the, the adopt the technology. And the, uh, uh, the fourth, creating economic growth and jobs. And other uh, reason is more comfortable life and lower energy bills that we can, we can get from, from the implementation of uh, energy efficiency. The global uh, community uh, uh, initiated by, by IEA uh, already mentioned that, that uh, uh, it was a major, a major impact to the economy uh, started by, by uh, the member of energy, I, I, uh, International Energy Agency uh, countries. They already have uh, the, the benefit uh, from the implementation of uh, energy efficiency. Since that, they are, uh, uh, continue to, to uh, look at their uh, possibility to, to increase and uh, uh, deploy a massive, uh, massive implementation of energy initiative in their country. And uh, at the end, they uh, 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 
come up with the grid that uh, EE is uh, the most uh, possible or the most important uh, fuel uh, that we have we have to think and we have to take a look and uh, for the, the uh, solution to combat the uh, climate change and this is also uh, the implementation of EE uh, proven to reduce the energy consumption significantly as well as a real solution to combat uh, climate change that contribute uh, significantly to reducing greenhouse gas emission. However, since uh, uh, in 2009, the progress from energy efficiency initiative is still uh, far from, from uh, being expected. And this is uh, uh, partly due to the government regulation, lack of support from financial uh, institution, which is, uh, has uh, resulted in the EE market not being able to work as uh, what we expect. For Indonesia, we uh, still rely on the uh, fossil fuels as an energy source, especially uh, in the power sector, a building and transportation sector, and the implementation of uh, energy efficiency should be carried out uh, seriously. And uh, how we can uh, adapt the technology? Uh, the technology is the key factors in bringing uh, significant change in energy efficiency. The question is, how can we accelerate the adaptation of the, the best available technology and anticipate such that uh, technology change? By having a good uh, understanding and the benefit of energy efficiency, then, um, we sure that the support from all partners will be obtained. Energy efficiency implementation can range from cost-free through, through the, the uh, adaptation of, of the uh, high technology that results large investment, but it is also will save uh, significant energy. Energy efficiency is investment returns can be made uh, in uh, a much faster compared to, to other uh, form of investment in the world. And uh, if we are talking about the creating economic growth and job uh, based on the energy in, in efficiency initiative, in the next uh, 20 years, uh, it is uh, projected that the global economy will grow more than uh, double. But this growth does not mean that it will encourage energy consumption to grow in the same amount uh, to drive the, the economy. This condition is made possible through energy saving intervention. With that, the amount of energy needed is the same as what we use today. This result is a, a scenario of a global economic growth accompanied by emission reduction, reduce energy costs, economic relaxation that encourages the growth of new economic activities and jobs, opportunities, as well as uh, increase their energy security. The key of energy efficiency driving factors are financial support, policy incentive, knowledge sharing, education, and commitment uh, from the government, uh, uh, from, from the, uh, the, the, the government. And based on the, uh, the, the uh, learn from, from many countries who already succeed in the energy efficiency deploy, deployment, they, they don't need the subsidy to, 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 to boost the energy efficiency program in their country. So this is one of the challenges that uh, we have uh, from the, uh, the energy, from the nice of uh, energy efficiency uh, uh, implementation. And the last is more comfortable life and uh, lower energy bills. This is already proved that uh, energy efficiency also provide the benefits of lower energy demand and lower energy bill uh, for the consumers. Uh, this has a positive impact uh, on increasing uh, consumer uh, income and higher spending of uh, peoples. This is also uh, one of the good things to the, the, the economy. In developing countries, uh, the increasing of energy efficiency on utilities provide uh, 
an opportunity for the government to provide more access for the peoples to get electricity, uh, which is, has been uh, we heard uh, from from Pak Hamam and also from from Pak Senda how the uh, the electricity the government can provide the, uh, the electricity to other people that's uh, now who has uh, who has no access to the electricity and the uh, energy efficiency is one of the solution to come to that to that uh, 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 program and the uh, energy efficiency is not just uh, about technology we see from 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 the, the the practical of the implementation of of energy efficiency in the world, but it is uh, about mindset, smart thinking, a governance, and also cost uh, effective solution. So this is all of, of the, the the positive impact that we can we can get from from the implementation of uh, energy efficiency and also energy conservation. Next slide, please. Yes, this is the, the projection that uh, made by produced by uh, National Energy Council uh, related with the uh, uh, Grand Energy Strategy of Indonesia uh, that uh, this is just uh, issued uh, last December 2020 uh, that the, the, the project says is, uh, will be a cumulative energy fair saving from energy conservation roadmap program activity 2020 to 2013. Projection, um, by uh, seeing this projection, uh, we can see that the energy management will make a significant uh, role and contribution to the increasing of energy efficiency and energy uh, conservation, especially in the industrial sector, building sector, transportation, and also the uh, from the power generation sectors. The household sector also makes a big, a big a contribution through the application of standard and labelings on household uh, appliances. If we are also projected to contribute to the achievement of uh, energy efficiency and energy con uh, conservation, but will occur in the relative uh, constant amount during the projection period, and the same will, will result from the street lighting. But in uh, from my my uh, few thoughts, uh, the deployment of energy efficient uh, street lighting uh, can make a significant contribution as obtained by uh, countries such as India, Thailand, Singapore, and other countries. The problem is that LED street lighting uh, that has been uh, installed in more than 90 cities and regencies in Indonesia is not yet connected to the matter. So that the benefits of the resulting saving have not been uh, obtained. So this is one of uh, our homework. Uh, how we can we can uh, match? How can we can link the, the uh, this initiative that the uh, 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 it was it was uh, developed by by uh, Pemda uh, and also. Uh, it is also contributed from Ministry of, of Energy and Mineral Resources. Uh, so we uh, connected uh, uh, the uh, LED that has been installed in 90 kabupaten and kota, then uh, the PEMDA can uh, get the benefit from the, the efficiency uh, program that they have been uh, invest in that area. Next, please. And this is this is uh, how the uh, the uh, smart uh, uh, initiative uh, can the uh, can support the uh, the, the uh, energy efficiency work. Uh, this is the this this equipment uh, equipment in, installed in uh, uh, Ministry of Energy buildings uh, offices in Jakarta. And uh, by having this, uh, putting this this uh, monitoring system, uh, we can see uh, uh, the, the how much the energy, the electricity we, we use uh, for uh, air condition, for utility, for uh, lamp, and they are also for other other using in in the the, the building. So uh, this is also we can we can see also uh, from this uh, 
uh, a system how much the the uh, energy the, the the emission that we can reduce how uh, this is uh, increase in uh, daily uh, uh, so this is this is very 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 uh, useful and very communicating uh, instrument that we have been installed in in the uh, ministry of energy has been installed in the the offices we hope they are, this is only one of uh, the, the the equipment that they are, uh, uh, already uh, support the uh, energy efficiency uh, initiative in the, 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 the government offices but uh, there are uh, still a lot of of, uh, of a program of uh, technology that can uh, we can input and we can intervene uh, to support the energy efficiency in the future I think uh, with that, I would like to, to uh, finish my presentation and uh, really uh, uh, glad to hear from you during the discussion time. Thank you, Pak pa Andika. Thank you very much, Bu Farida, for very uh, inspiring the uh, presentation that you have already uh, present. Very excellent. Uh, like I said that, uh, I was right that you have a lot of experience and also uh, thought about uh, energy efficiency, and I, I I have several several notes that I think uh, I'd like to share with all the uh, audience that uh, uh, Bufari does uh, start with the question: Why should we think about energy efficiency? And in fact, energy efficiency is including the demand side management. Uh, together with uh, supply side management, becoming uh, integrated in, so, supposed to be an integrated resource planning for uh, energy system, and energy efficiency is going to be uh, it can be account as the first fuel before we think another fuel to be used, and this is also a very effective way to combat climate change. Uh, this is an uh, instrument to to adapting a new technology, creating job, creating economy, and uh, this all make the answer of the question of why we should think about energy efficiency. And uh, this also because Indonesia still rely on fossil fuel, you know, fossil fuels also uh, together producing the energy while it's also producing the, the, the pollutant. So it's, it, we, we should consider about this, uh, this uh, negative impact of the fossil fuel. And uh, we need also to accelerate the, the adop adoption of uh, technology. So that's why energy efficiency is one of the uh, uh, important uh, instrument to do that. And uh, as our country is still in the uh, developing uh, country, like uh, Pahamam has said that we, we, we need to achieve the uh, high income uh, per capita, but uh, at the same time, we should think about how we could uh, get there uh, without you know, uh, using uh, uh, excessive use of en uh, energy, so that in this case, where then uh, energy efficiency come into into the line for taking part, uh, you know, securing the economic growth without sacrificing the energy. I think this is uh, the point that Bufarida also uh, mentioned about the importance of energy efficiency, and uh, Bufarida also has already explained the, the huge potential of uh, poten uh, energy conservation. That we can that we can achieve that we can uh, uh, promote uh, to still have the energy services without you know without using uh, excessive use of energy. And the last, uh, this is uh, quite uh, quite interesting. Abu Farida mentioned about the smart building. This this where it's come with uh, the, the interconnection uh, with the smart technology, the smart grid. But in the small, uh, smaller size, the, not in the system wise, but in building wise, we have smart technology with smart building. It, we can manage the building, uh, use the, the, the energy efficiently, and also we can conserve the building uh, as much as possible. And we can control, we can monitor, and you can uh, you do any uh, 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 monitoring and supervising of the, the use of energy in the, in the building. It's quite interesting. Thank you very much, Bubarida. Uh, the next, uh, we will move to our uh, our sponsor, yeah, uh, from FAWD, VAUD, yeah, for Fang Engine Business Division, 
we have now Mr. Jiang Cheng and also Mr. Zhao Liang Jun. So you have both gentlemen have a five, a fifteen minute each. So please manage uh, 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 within you, and then uh, I I will give the opportunity and the time uh, for your presentation. Please, Mr. Yang and Mr. Zhao Liang Jun. Mr. Yang Cheng, are you with us? Host, apakah dari Poldi sudah bergabung, Mr. Yang Cheng dan Mr. Zhao Liang Jun? Oke. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Oke. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. First, I will introduce two new speakers, Mr. Du from FAWD Generator Engine Exclusive Distributor, you have power. And another one is Mrs. Wei from our OEM partner, RCG Power. Okay, next. In recent years, in order to develop the economy and uh, improve the people's living standards, Indonesia has continuously develop the power engine the industry. FAWD as a power core of generator sense plays an important role in power supplier. We are very happy to participate in the form with the theme of smart grid and engine efficiency. The theme of the conference is also very consistent with our brand mission. That is to become a great efficient and intelligent power chain provider of China's first world World, world class. Starting from the value point of users, enterprises, industries, and society, we are we, we will fully get the growth of users, make Japan Power a brand with more with more satisfying users, more reliable partners, and more private employees. Always start from the value point of users in enterprises, industry, and society fully meet the needs of users so that the liberation of power to become more satisfying and the trust with users, partners, and the employees feel more pride of the brand. At the same time, we will compress comprehensively enhance the strength of the enterprise, help FAW, FAW to liberate and expand the global business of China's commercial vehicle enterprises and uh, work together to create a great, efficient and uh, intelligent power new future. In the field of new engine, we should stress the research on new engines such as for fuel, fuel cell and uh, hybrid power. Here, I represent, represent FAWD promise to provide the best quality products and uh, service and provide the most efficient assistance for the development of smart grid and engine efficiency in Indonesia. Next, please allow Ms. Do to introduce FW company and product. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. It's my pleasure to introduce FW. Uh, my Introduction have four parts. The first one is uh, FAW introduction. Uh, FAW is a energy division is the important unit of FAW commercial vehicle business. The basic engine research and natural base. Uh, FAW is the first uh, automobile uh, works in China. And uh, we belong to the FAW Japan auto company. This is the first uh, uh, plus uh, uh, commercial vehicle company in China. The market share is the number one. And uh, this is uh, next. Next, please. Next, please. Next, please. Uh, this is uh, uh, our opening. 
But uh, according to the unified development FAW, recognize all the units uh, related to culture of nature because they get to be in 2017. Now, capital 12 for functional department and three subject deliveries. Uh, uh, they employ over 5,000. And uh, this is, uh, we have four parts. Why is the FAWC? The second is uh, FAW Thought Study. The third one is uh, UC Build Park and Director Research Center. The third one is the FAW RDC Engine Department. Next, please. Uh, this is our layout. FAWD covers UC Dalian Changchun Three Cities. The first one in Changchun is our RD1 department, which is a heavy diesel engine and center. The second is our moving parts department, which is our crankshaft and the connected road production base. In Dalian, we have a Dalian factory. Uh, it produces our medium and the light engine production. Uh, in UC, we have five. Yes. Um, first, uh, our FAWD headquarters in UC. The second is uh, our Huiz factory, which is the heavy engine production base. Dahao Power, this is uh, our remanufacturing re 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 base. The is our container tech uh, institute, which is uh, to the resource for future technologies. The last one is our common rail and budget department, which produces and research our common rail. Next, please. Uh, this is our supply system. FAWD choose uh, supply with the leading edge brand in the world as partners. Uh, we, and we always keep the same idea, same kind, same achievement as preparation idea to realize win win. Uh, this is uh, over the future, so this is our uh, whole uh, supply like Bosch, Mother. There's a polyvalent like this. Uh, next, please. This is uh, our product system. FSWD produce products include diesel engine, gas engine, we manufacture products, fuel pump. Diesel engine displacement from 2 to 16 liters, power from 40 to 700. 50 uh, horsepower, took from 282 to 3,400 and 400 and. Next, please. Mm, this is to use our sales volume and the car. FAWD sells uh, around 350,000 units engine per year, and the sales income is over 100. Uh, 50 billion RMB per year. Yes, please. Uh, the second part is uh, about our overseas business instruction. Yes, please. FAWD export uh, over 24,000 units in the last year. It did the highest report. Also, uh, this, year, this year, our export sales volume will be higher than last year. Until now, we had exported over 200,000 units that cover more than uh, 40 countries and areas. Yes, please. Uh, look at this page, we show our main export uh, cooperation company. We need to build of the built and road effective FWD export China based on batching and standard law. Get a continued increase in overseas market. Uh, look at this picture. We have a main cooperation company like FAW, Dongfeng, SDLD, Zhongli, uh, Heli, JSC, like this is the famous uh, uh, big companies and uh, construction companies in the world, also in the world. Yes, please. Um, this introduced our overseas office. From 2013, we established the uh, overseas offices in all around uh, the world. Now, we have 14 offices around the world, also in Canton, 
Indonesia. Yes, please. The third party is uh, our brother Mackie Introduction. Yes, please. FAW join FAW join uh, exhibitions all around the world every year. Like we join the Russia Moscow International Construction Machinery Exhibition. And uh, yeah, every year we also enjoy the Indonesia International Industrial Exhibition. Yes, please. Uh, also, every year we will do many recommended meetings in some countries, like in Vietnam, South Africa, Chile. Uh, FW for the marketing and production events, in fact, we will invite our customers and uh, show in our products and uh, introduce our company. Also do some training service and sales. This is for us to establish the FAWDE brand in the regional oil area. Next, please. Uh, this is uh, all the picture is over uh, six languages uh, website. Uh, on this website, you can find some all our products information. Also in uh, countries, we also do, we will uh, join some magazines like uh, uh, Fox magazine in South Africa, uh, equipment magazines in Indonesia. Also we are based in uh, website like uh, our daily website in Vietnam. Also we open official account in Facebook, Instagram and other channels. Yes, please. Uh, September 26th is uh, our FW's birthday. So uh, every two years, we will establish the nine to six customers global celebration. We will invite our uh, important clients back to FWD. Also, every year, we organize the managers interview and uh, investigate overseas market enhance the communication between FWD and the customers. Uh, the last part, next please. The last part is uh, FWD in Indonesia. Next please. FWD products cover light, medium, and heavy diesel engines. So when you say the diesel engine covered power from 70 kilowatts to 360 kilowatts, plus are divided into city plants. And also in Indonesia, we our customer use our all-win brand like the uh, CDL CDM. This is our high labor product. Yes, please. This introduces our uh, stage three and stage four uh, generator engines. The green is our Wuxi based products. The red one is our Dalian with the Dalian based products. Okay, so please. FWD generating set mainly export to Indonesia, Philippines, Malaysia, South Africa, Korea, Chile, South Africa, and more than other, uh, other 80 countries and regions. Every year, we will export uh, over 1,100 sets in Indonesia. Yes, please. This part we show our some uh, sales projects uh, in overseas, like we are the supplier of South Africa Telecom and Mobile, Indonesia Telecom and Grid, Malaysia Telecom and Mobile. Yes, please. Uh, Petrol spending and mineral exploitation in Middle East. From a urban power supply. Yes, please. The last one is uh, some projects in China. We are just about the China Water Resource uh, Bureau. State of limitation of radio film and television. 
Major China, oil field, military equipment. Okay, above is uh, the introduction of FAWD company and uh, our products. FAWD will do our best to uh, support and help uh, Indonesia to globally. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Yang Cheng and Mr. Zhao Yang Jun. That's why we gave a very good uh, presentation regarding the product of the uh, 4D. Now, let us go to the uh, question and answer. So, since the, uh, the the time is quite limited, so uh, I'm really sorry that I have to choose uh, on this uh, several question, a uh, few questions actually, for Bu, uh, for Pa Senda and Bu, Bu Farida. So please uh, respond this uh, very briefly. I think uh, each of you could uh, ex uh, explore uh, the, the answer not, not more than uh, 10 minutes. Uh, for Pa Senda, uh, this is a question from Mr. Tri Haryanto. Mohon pencerahannya terkait smart grid, apakah bisa langsung dirasakan oleh negara industri yang berbasis pada pertanian? So uh, please enlighten us about the, the, the benefit of smart grid how we can get the benefit for the country that uh, based on the agriculture like Indonesia. And the second question for Pak Senda is from Mr. Chodrin Butar Butar. Hi Pak Senda, could you please advise, is it the coal power plant still pioneer in our government target? Thank you. So this uh, asking about the coal uh, fuel uh, domination in Indonesia. Uh, and the, la the, the last question is from Lal Chan Gulubrai for Bu Farida. Ibu Farida, good presentation. Can you please indicate Indonesian initiative for the promotion of energy efficiency appliances like and efficiency star ratings and the success that has, in, has been achieved. So this is about the uh, energy labeling, I think, Bu Farida. Okay, so yes. Pak Senda, uh, please, uh, two questions for you, and Bu Farida, one question for you. Thank you very much, please. Thank you, Pak Andika. Uh, this very good question about the smart grid, whether it uh, can be implemented for our agriculture country. Actually, smart grid is uh, it's not depend of what kind of country we are, but depend how can we get benefit from it. So, uh, smart grid is actually to make sure that we can get advantage from the the technology because uh, the smart grid is not the sake of the technology itself, but how can we get benefit out of that. Uh, for the example, when we do have the uh, smart meter that we can read our charging, our bill, and we also can sell our product if we have rooftop. So it's many advantage we can use from the smart grid. This was we call uh, the smart uh, grid, but. Of course, it's not the sake for the technology because if the sake for the technology is becoming is very expensive, we not spend for the uh, expensive technology, but we're thinking about how we can uh, get benefit uh, for our main purpose. Uh, that's uh, for that uh, question. And the second, the, the coal, whether the coal will be still pioneering our um, uh, prime energy in Indonesia. I think uh, the new technology, renewable energy technology is already the price becoming competitive, but we, of course, there is technology about renewable energy need to be covered like uh, intermittents for variable renewable energy uh, to make sure that they are ready to inter inject it to the grid. So we need to work out how the renewable energy will be ready, whether we should use it uh, storage, battery, and we then will uh, be a good uh, uh, system in the grid. But the coal itself, we already 
too much at the moment because coal is our main source of in, uh, uh, energy. But actually, uh, we can make coal more clean because we already have at the moment. Uh, there's new technology available uh, for us. We call carbon capture storage that uh, we can capture the CO2 from the coal. And after that, we can storage the CO2. We inject to depleted oil field around us. So it also can produce more oil and gas. So we ca it can be bring benefit to us. Besides, we get clean uh, energy from coal. We also can uh, manage to uh, get uh, more benefit from that. So it's specific for Indonesia because we have coal, we, we have depleted oil field. So that's why we need to be smart instead of just uh, hate what we have. I think at uh, this for a moment, for Andika, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Excellent response, Pak Senda. Uh, I believe this already fulfilled the question. Uh, Bu Farida, your turn. Yeah, thank you, Pak. So the, actually there are two uh, standards and labeling that have been issued by MEMR, namely CFR. Uh, I'm sure everybody will, will, uh, will uh, get the surprise. Why, 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 why? You still have a CFR and uh, you uh, do the standard uh, of the CFR, CFL. Yes, uh, we do that because uh, we would like to keep uh, two CFL, uh, CFL uh, lamp factories in the country that are still in production. And uh, they are uh, at the same time, they are assisted in parallel to, to produce the uh, LED uh, uh, lamp. And the others is uh, air condition uh, standard and labeling. And uh, currently in the process, uh, the, the process already in the Ministry of Law and Human Rights is uh, the standard uh, for a fan, uh, RC, refrigerators, iron, uh, television, dispenser, water pump, blender, washing machine, and they are all of the, 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 the concept or the, the, the uh, standard and labeling is mandatory. And uh, the choice of this product is uh, based on the number of appliances used in, in the household. So this is the, 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 the basic uh, principle uh, of the, uh, how to, to, to choose the, the, uh, the appliances uh, that we would like to, to have the standard and, standard and, and uh, also labeling. We put the, 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 the good one is uh, they will have a five star and then the, the, the uh, as the lower will will have a four and a three stars. So uh, to that uh, we have uh, uh, also support by uh, the uh, laboratorium, but uh, we still have uh, uh, a lack of, of uh, laboratorium operated in, in in the country. So this is one of the challenge for us uh, uh, to to uh, boost the uh, labeling and and a standard for the appliances. And uh, we should keep in, in, the, uh, in mind that uh, uh, there are so many imported appliances uh, uh, coming into, into the country. And this is also one of, of the, the, the challenge for us how to, 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 uh, uh, to keep our uh, national pro product and uh, they can still compete with the, uh, the product from, uh, com uh, comes from, from abroad. I hope that the, 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 uh, my answer is can uh, uh, fill uh, your question. Thank you, Pak Andika. Well, I believe it's excellent answer. I know that you, you are an uh, uh, expert in this area. So I, I believe this will, will fulfill the, the question that uh, raised by uh, our audience. Well, thank you very much, uh, Ibu Warida, Pak Senda, and also all friends from uh, Vaudi. Uh, I, I believe that there are still questions, but the time is limiting us for discussing more. But uh, we have taken a lot of information and knowledge from uh, all the distinguished uh, uh, 
uh, presenters and also speak person. And uh, uh, I believe this will give uh, uh, our audience uh, knowledge and information, valuable knowledge and information. By this, I should close the session of discussion and give back to the uh, MC. Thank you very much. Uh, very good afternoon. Uh, keep healthy. And wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you, Pak Andika. Terima kasih, Bu Farida. Terima kasih, Pak Senda. Terima kasih, Pak Andika. Thank you to Mr. Andika for guiding this energy talk webinar today. Our FAUG Fund Engine Big Station or FAUG. Thank you to Mr. Andika and Mr. Eddie Widiono for taking the time today. Also, the speakers, Mr. Senda Humuzan Kanam, Mrs. Farda Z, and from our sponsor today, Mr. Yang Cheng and Mr. Chiao Liang Chuan, who gave an extraordinary presentation to all of us. Visit Electric and Power Indonesia 17 till 20 November 2021 at GXPO Kemayoran. Connect with ASEAN largest electric and power gathering, meet with decision makers and key trade buyers on the floor. In 2019, the show was visited by over than 15,000 threat attendees, all looking for the best solution for their business. This year, Electric and Power Indonesia will be presented in a hybrid format, which provides opportunities for exhibitors to engage with their on-site live event buyers, as well as generate new business lists through the online virtual show. It allows exhibitors who are unable to travel to still participate in the live exhibition and at the same time connect with their buyers digitally. Contact our team to get the hybrid offering. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for me to close to this webinar. Before we close the webinar, we will have a quick polling. Please choose what is the best answer. The question is on your screen now. Which topic do you prepare for the next energy talk? Total power solution, captive market, or the data utilization? Yes, thank you. Okay, for those of you who want to rewatch the webinar, we will send webinar materials and recordings to your email. I am Anissa Pamarindo and PCCI Act for Live. Thank you for your time and have a great day. See you in the next Energy Talk 11 series, part of ASEAN Energy and Utilities Digital Week. Sampai jumpa. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Pak Edi, terima kasih Pak Edi, waktunya, juga kesempatannya. Bu Farida, Pak Senda, salam sehat semuanya. Terima kasih Pak uh, Andika. Sama-sama Pak. As China moves to time-ordered engine manufacturer, our perseverance to keep pace with the world's cutting-edge technologies and our remaining pursuit of clean, efficient, and intelligent make us the engine power expert from China. Who are you? We have created three brands, All Win, Power Win, King Win. We offer diversified products ranging from 40 to 760 horsepower and are hailed as engine power supermarket. In terms of products, we have always adopted rigorous quality standards. In the past, international standard quality system certifications such as ISO 9001, QS 9000, TS 16949 and IETF 16949. Insisting on quality assurance based on the system. Quality control with an iron fist in our quality efforts to ensure the advanced quality of products made in China. At the frontier of global technological innovation, we also cooperate with global leading companies and the scientific research institutes such as AVL, FEV, and Ricardo. As a trusted partner of famous companies such as Jefan, Dongfeng, Jack, XEMG, Photon, Hallmarks, SDLG, and Henley, our engine is their first choice. Our 11 liters and 13 liters products are market leaders in China. As to generator set field, 
with a power range of 12 to 270 kWe. Our adapter can satisfy the need for different power ranges and global inventory reaches up to 100,000 sets. We provide services to Telkom South Africa and Mobile Telkom Indonesia and State Grid, Telecom Malaysia and Mobile, the Ministry of Water Resources of PRC and CNPC in such fields as oil field, war industry, hydraulic engineering, telecommunications and infrastructure. In terms of manufacturing technology, we applied the most advanced AC power measurement technology, ground source heat pump composite system, and coat test technology to ensure the minimum energy consumption at the factory. We have also built a smart factory and formed a complete planning system of engine smart factory based on our solid foundation of automation, transformed production from made in China to intelligent manufacturing in China. We have established solid strategic partnerships with top component providers such as Bosch, Honeywell, Malle. Nowadays, our products are sold in more than 60 countries and regions including Vietnam, India, Russia and Indonesia. We are committed to ensuring that our products will always go hand in hand with Supreme Core Services. China's engine power expert, going global. Audiens yang hadir tadi banyak e, bertanya e, dan punya interes yang tinggi mengenai kelistrikan untuk kepulauan dan memang e, mereka e, pengen tahu sebenarnya di mana batu sandungnya mengapa listrik kepulauan belum bisa berkembang secara sempurna di Indonesia. Sini kan banyak pertemuan konsultan mekanikal elektrikal jadinya pertemuannya di sini sih lebih dominan lebih ke ketemu dari sisi-sisi konsultan sama lihat dari tim-tim yang biasa berperang di proyek sih lebih ke situ sih sebenarnya. Usually we get to meet about 80% of local uh, visitors and about 20% of international visitors. Tempat meeting point yang sangat bagus karena customer-customer kami yang lama akan muncul yang kita nggak tahu dan sangat efisien daripada keliling Jakarta temu customer satu persatu. It's also the opportunity to uh, discover new leads, to talk to people that we usually don't talk and to showcase our uh, our solution. Kemudian bisa mungkin di masa depan bisa saya gunakan sebagai alternatif dari komponen-komponen yang selama ini saya gunakan. Jadi biar komponennya nggak itu-itu mulu kali ya. Kita ikut di event elektrik Indonesia terutama yang diselenggarakan oleh Pamerindo kurang lebih hampir tujuh kali sejak berdirinya Chin di Indonesia tahun 2005. Sebenarnya agak menyesal sih kenapa nggak dari tanggal 11 karena emang seru dan dapat banyak uh, vendor baru yang mungkin nanti bakal bisa lebih kompetitif dengan vendor yang selama ini kita gunakan. Banyak sekali informasi dan teknologi-teknologi yang sangat pesat sekali yang membuat saya Wow gitu kan dan luar biasa sekali dan banyak produk-produk yang lain yang kita bisa tahu dua tahun lalu nggak muncul sekarang muncul apa aja dan kita bisa lihat kompetitor perkembangannya produk-produk kita yang dulu Schneider nggak ada sekarang sudah ada lah ya ini buat 
refresh kita untuk kedepannya itu ngapain. Keep it up and see you in two years.